For half of his life, Damien Eccles wasn't able to do this. Such is the way of the world, you can never know. He wasn't able to walk down the street. For more than a decade, he was forced to live in solitary confinement on Arkansas's death row in a cell so small, he says he could only take a few steps. For 18 and a half years, I hadn't taken a step without chains on my feet. So I was basically learning to walk again. The first day I was out, I kept almost falling because I wasn't used to even being able to walk freely. Eccles was sent to death row after being convicted of the brutal murders of three eight-year-old Cub Scouts, Stephen Branch, Michael Moore, and Christopher Byers. Crimes he has always said he did not commit. If I sat around and thought about it a lot, thought about everything that had been done to us, you know, the cover-up, the, the way they tried to fight so hard to, you know, keep the DNA from coming out, if I thought about that a lot, I would probably get bitter. But, it, you know, it's like we're venturing into an entire new world, and I don't want to carry that stuff with me whenever I go forward. Eccles never gave up hope that he would be released, but after fighting for so many years for his freedom, the deal that led to his release in August happened in just a matter of days. He agreed to plead guilty to three counts of first-degree murder while maintaining his innocence. It's known as an Alford plea. It's incredibly hard. It's a very hard thing to swallow. Um, but at the same time, we can still keep fighting like we've been talking about out here where I can get decent medical care, where I can get decent nutrition, where I can have sunlight, where I'm not in threat of losing my life on a daily basis. Eccles is the only person to have ever gone from Arkansas's death row one day to a free man the next. Following a short hearing in Jonesboro where the judge accepted the plea deal, he, along with Jason Baldwin and Jesse Miss Kelly, known as the West Memphis Three, walked out of the Craighead County Courthouse free men. A huge crowd, mostly of supporters, lined the streets. It was almost like the mirror reverse of whenever we were arrested. You know, people back then were lined up like that, but it was they were condemning us, calling us names, damning us. This was the exact opposite. You know, these people were cheering and they were happy and just celebrating the fact that we were finally getting out. So it was like everything came completely full circle. His first stop after being released, the DMV, where he and Baldwin got IDs. Getting out of prison, I didn't even have a change of clothes. All I had was the clothes on my back and they were given to me as a gift. I didn't have a single penny in my pocket, no credit cards, no driver's license, no anything, no source of income at all, and still don't. After celebrating with friends and family at a rooftop party at a Memphis hotel, Eccles boarded a plane for the first time in his life and left the natural state. We went to Seattle for a couple days, stayed out there. Um, we left Seattle and then came straight here to New York. Why New York City? We had um, friends who were who said we could use their, their place while we're here. And we knew we had to go somewhere. We couldn't just stay right there, you know, in Arkansas until, you know, while things were still raging, things needed time to die down. Um, so we just came here. While Eccles has been recognized in New York City, for the most part, he can live here anonymously. As for whether or not he'll return to Arkansas, right now he has no plans on settling there. I don't think I'll ever live there, but you know, that's where all of my family still lives. It's where, you know, all the people that helped us, Arkansas Take Action, for all those years, that's where, you know, they're based at. And it would be nice to be able to go there and see those people that, you know, spent all this time working to help us and, and just be able to, you know, go there in person and, and meet all of them. He and his wife, Lori Davis, talked candidly with us about his new life what it was like being locked up in the early 90s and not re-entering society until 2011. And you think you have to want more than you need. Well, there's a lot of things, you know, that I didn't know about and that I hadn't experienced that are, um, that most people have experienced, you know, like trying to use the internet, trying to figure out computers, trying to figure out how to use a cell phone. It's surreal because no one, you know, we didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how he was going to transition and how long it was going to take. Or, but he was very, you know, he was very calm and grounded. But no, you know, I couldn't even imagine what was going on in his head. 
I had to learn how to use a fork again. I hadn't held a fork in almost 20 years. I was used to eating with my hands. While Eccles describes life on death row as hell, he says there are positives that came from it. For one, he met his wife, who dedicated her life to freeing him after learning about the case through the HBO documentary, Paradise Lost. Lori literally saved my life. She put more time, more effort, more energy. You know, there were times when she had to take out loans just to pay for legal fees. I would not be sitting here right now. I would be six feet underground dead, if not for Lori. Eccles, a high school dropout, also came out of prison more educated. At the time, I don't think I really even thought of it as educating myself. I thought of it as trying to stay alive. Because the people around me, most of them were literally either dying or dead inside. You know, whenever they came to prison, they stopped and I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to be one of those people. So I would just look around for new things, whether it was through books or the stuff that I was doing, like venturing into the art world, you know, visual arts, poetry, um, writing short stories, keeping journals, all of these different things. And his support network grew tremendously while he was behind bars. From the rich and famous like Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder, and Dixie Chick's Natalie Maines, to ordinary Arkansans and supporters around the globe. You know, some of them say, you know, Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh, literally, and people don't know this. When they learned about it, they, you know, of course they helped, you know, finance inv investigation and, and testing and all that, but they worked on the case. They were literally involved on a day-to-day -day basis. Making decisions, you know, what investigators to bring in, what to send them out to investigate. Studying the case, knew the case, inside and out and offered advice and a lot of the breakthroughs came from the work that they did. Mm -hmm. If we came up with a list of everybody that we needed to thank, and this is just the people who are absolutely vital that this wouldn't have happened without, even that list would take half an hour to read off. Now supporters are focused on getting the West Memphis Three pardoned, while the prosecuting attorney believes the right men were convicted and the state is not investigating the case. Eccles and his team are in hopes of clearing his name. I think it'll take time. It's going to take more work. You know, we're, we're renewing efforts right now and things like we want to start getting the tip line out there again for maybe people who saw something, who heard something and were afraid to come forward for some reason before. Maybe they'll come forward now. We're going to keep going forward with new testing, keep going forward, you know, interviewing witnesses, things like this. Um, so it's not going to stop.